<laughs> 2,000 damage. Let's see. Let's see the damage graphs. <laughs> Brother, <laughs> uh. Dude, it's What's still that? going. Okay, so now let's try it on this character right here. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. One shot. Hello, my dudes, and welcome. Today we're gonna be going through the DRS Daggerdin build. There's a lot of stuff to cover here, and this build is amazing. So let's just get straight into what we're gonna be talking about today. So we're gonna go through a few options, talk about the important choices of this build. Then we're gonna talk about the items that we're gonna be choosing. And then finally, we're also gonna be talking about how the damage works and why it goes to such insane values that really go up, over up around 2000 damage on the first attack that you do in the turn so before we continue if you want access to the spreadsheet or the image i'm gonna have them posted here in the links spreadsheets in my discord channel which is linked in the description below and if you enjoy the content drop a like drop a subscribe and let's get straight into the build so i'm really excited to talk about this this is something that i had in my mind for a while now and yeah let's get straight to it what is the core strategy of this build we want to be doing damage. We're going to be dual wielding daggers and we'll be using smites with high level spell slots because we will have infinite sorcery points with a lot of additional DRS damage sources, damage riders and DRS that will maximize the damage that we can do. It's a little bit complicated, but let's get through the build. So, so what are the choices that we want to be making? I'm going to be covering mostly this build today because I feel like this one is the most fun uh, because it does a maximum single burst. But there's also, I have some variants that will do more damage in a single turn over the burst on the first attack. And there's also a few variants here and there, like action search variant, instead of the warlock, the extra paladin level or the rogue variant, which will give you an extra bonus action, which you can abuse my sanctuary with. So, two levels of Paladin will give you access to Divine Smite. Please make sure that you get dueling fighting style. This is really important because this will allow you to abuse the double attack whenever you use a Smite as an attack. Then two levels of Sorcerer will give you infinite Sorcery points and we can use that to make four level, fourth level spell slots, which you are normally not able to do with this build unless you get the two Sorcerer levels. And then... And then we're going to take three levels of Ranger to get the Colossus Slayer Hunter ability. This is a very good DRS source and very reliable. And then we're going to get two more levels. One to get a feed, which could either be Savage Attacker or Alert. And then we're also going to get our, our extra attack. Then the next level is going to be Rogue. Just one level to get the sneak, the sneak attack that we can use as a DRS. And then one level of Warlock Deep, because, okay, here you could have effectively just go for Fighter and just get two extra attacks on your turn. But because I want to make a more flashy attack in this turn, I'm going to go for a, a level on Warlock, because Hex is such a good damage rider in this build. And the final level, you can feel free to experiment here a little bit and let me know in the comments if you think that there might be a better choice here. But I go for Paladin Oath of Vengeance to guarantee myself that advantage. So, but yeah, feel free to experiment here and let me know in the comments. So, what items are we going to be talking about? We're dual wielding Dolor Amarus and Vicious Short Bow is going to be our choice of bow. This is really important and they deserve a video by themselves. But, just because we have to talk about this, as you can see, the Dolor Amarus buff is basically applied 16 times then for rings i'm going for Kalus glow ring then to be honest for brute mother's revenge and cold strike bond is really more up to you and how you want to if you want to use these items they're not going to make a big difference on your damage this is really important crater flesh gloves very very important if you don't have perilous stakes ballistarmol will will take you a long way otherwise you can just wear something that maybe slightly boosts your damage a bit um, not many good armors for this build, really whatever you like. Um, Shade Slayer Cloak is very good, as well as Saravox Horn Helmet, if you want to maximize your crit chances. However, if you want to wear something that boosts your damage a bit, like the um, Circlet of Arcane, Diadem of Arcane Synergy, or maybe even the Helm of Baldur, and if you don't want to be stunned, or... 
or the Helmet of Greed. The Helmet of Greed is also a very good choice because it's going to give you a second bonus action, which could be used in conjunction with the Mind Sanctuary because we're talking about a tactician build. So Mind Sanctuary works as before, even though it was nerfed a little bit. And yeah, these are the items. So now we've covered the build, we've covered the items. Let's look at what we're going to be dealing with. So first of all, we have our weapon damage riders which is going to be the color the um, caustic bound ring which can you can also use the um, you call it strange conduit ring it will do a little bit more damage if you go that way because it's uh, when you create it, it's going to do double damage brood mother's revenge a code for your weapon that's going to do some poison damage um this is a paladin ability inquisitor's might is really up to you it's just a little bit more radiant damage and the elemental weapon from the drake flow Drakethroat Glaive. Now, what's important to note about this is that you can actually twin cast this with a sorcerer. And this will allow you to apply this buff to both your daggers. So, these are the weapon damage riders. Then we have the regular damage riders, which is going to be Psionic Overload, which will deal an additional 1 to 4 psychic damage. But it's actually quite good to have that. Um, Kalos Glowing and Hex, which you get from the Warlock level. Then we also have the Creed Damage Riders, which are the $3 Amarus items that we talked about um, that actually stack when you have all of them together. And then for damage sources, we have our Smite Ability, which is going to be applied twice per attack, which will also apply to physical normal attacks. And then we also have Sneak Die, the, the Sneak Attack, which is also going to be, I guess, it's more of a uh, source than a, it's more of a DRS than a, a damage source. And then you have Falara Louvre, Crater Flesh Gloves, and Colossus Slayer. Now, okay, so let's look at how this works. <laughs> Before we continue, on the first round of combat, what is really important to do, the support character should have Falara Louvre active and hold person the target. So this will give you pretty much a 100% crit rate. If the enemy is um, stunned, you have advantage, and if you land any melee attacks, they are always critical. So it could be hold person, hold monster, depends on what you're fighting. Then, optionally, you can have Mind Sanctuary on to help you manage your action economy a bit better, and you can have the Inquisitor's Might. Then for the main character, you want to be using bon a bonus action to cast Hex, and Perilous Stakes, it can also be cast from the support character, or if you have a, an, an extra action that you want to use, you can it from that character and of course code your weapon before combat so this is what you want to to have ready when the combat starts it is a little bit complicated sometimes to get everything down so sometimes you might want to skip some of these things and also perilous takes is one per long rest if i recall correctly let me see per long rest yeah so you can't use this every fight so this is why i also recommend going for the ballista armor because it will give you the piercing damage um, buff without needing to spend this. Okay, so how does this work? You do a smite ability whenever you're going to be attacking. You use your smite and you choose your level 4 smites and then you choose an enemy and this will actually proc uh, a double attack whenever you do that. So the smite in itself will carry the crit damage riders because the enemy is held and the damage riders then the actual weapon attack will proc the weapon damage riders and the damage riders and the crit damage riders so this is what we're seeing here and then we will also have a falara loof proc which it does which procs the dolor amarus which procs all our damage and crit damage riders because it's a crater flesh collapse it's always it always procs on a critical and then it will also proc one instance of all our damage riders and crit damage riders as well. Then it will also proc the sneak attack, but to proc that, you need to make sure that you have it in your reactions, um, set up to always occur on critical hits and on normal attacks without asking. So that's important. If you don't have it, if you, if you have it on asking, then it's not going to become a DRS. It's, it's not going to actually carry on more damage. Uh, and then that itself will cause another instance of Falara Loop and all the subsequent damage. It will deal a, a set of the damage riders by itself. Then it will also proc Colossus Slayer because now the enemy is damaged. So it will do one additional 1d8 plus all the damage rider and 
it will also proc the credit flush graphs and then the credit flush gloves will also be proc by the smite and as you can see this is a lot of damage and this is the first part of the of the attack that you're doing because then there's a follow-up attack which doesn't have the sneak and the colossus layer in it which loses out on a falara luven a crater flesh gloves proc but other than that it still does a significant amount of damage so yeah it's a little bit less damage on the second attack on the second part of the first attack but it's still very good and then because you have an extra attack you can do it again in your turn and if you manage your resource as well with Mind Sanctuary, and if you go for the Action Search build that we talked about earlier, you could effectively do eight of these attacks in one turn. And the main, it will have a very strong first hit and then a very a good, a good second hit. And then all your subsequent turns would be two of these uh, attacks. So to make infinite sorcery points, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here. It's just, you, you, uh, I'll, link a, I'll, I'll link the video. Um, but what you should keep in mind is that you should be drinking a potion of Supreme Arcane Cultivation and then it, that will allow you to create 4th level spells, sorcery points. Uh, that, just by drinking it, will give you a 4th level spell slot which will allow you to make even more. Pretty much. The infinite part, of the, the, um, that's a whole different video. I'm gonna put a link in it in the description as well. Uh, okay. So let's take this out for a test drive. This is our target. She's held, she's peril staked, she's hexed, she's in, in shriek, and okay, moment of truth. We use psionic overload because it's a very good damage rider. And then we go right next to our enemy and we do divine smite level four. From, let's see, I'm using a mod obviously to give her 10,000 HP. Let's see how much damage we do on the first attack. So, ready? One, two, three! <laughs> 2,000 damage, guys. Okay, uh, let's, see the, let's see the damage graphs. Brother, uh, <laughs> what's that? It's still going. Okay, so we have 76 piercing, 12 thunder, or acid. The hex damage. Why is it doing more damage? 9 plus 9, okay, vulnerable. Aha, uh -huh. it's a crit and he's also vulnerable, so it's doing 46 basically. Aha, uh -huh. then we have 152 radian. This is from the Crater Fish Gloves. Here we can see the Falara loop being activated, which again procs Crater's um, wounds, which procs Falara loop. And then we have the Sneak Attack, which procs Crater's wounds, Colossus Slayer, Falara loop. And then we have the second attack, which is 74 piercing, 176 radiant, 64, 58 force again, then there's the 52 from the Falara loop. As you see, you see that the Dolor Amarus buff is being applied to everything here. So, it, to every major source of the DRS. So, yeah, it's not being shown afterwards, like the hex damage, but it's shown in the damage. So, this is why it's 21 extra but because the enemy is vulnerable is 42 so it's 42 times 16 this is why the damage is going so crazy so it's doing a lot of damage so let's do a subsequent attack let's see how much a subsequent <laughs> let's see how much damage how much damage a subsequent attack will do so yeah it doesn't do as much as the first attack so the second attack dealt 1300 which you could say is not as much <laughs> 1300 and remember guys if we were going for the fighter variant if we were using the mind sanctuary to give us extra attack if we were using potion of haste uh, if you we were using you know our bonus action to do damage instead of the psionic overload we could have pushed the damage even further so with a little bit more preparation and if we focused on that but yeah right now we dealt in two attacks basically um 3000 damage 3,000 damage in one attack action. So an action search would probably do another 2,500 because it wouldn't apply the first, the sneak and the Colossus Slayer again because you only get those once per turn. But yeah, <laughs> the, this is the damage that we were talking about. 3,000 damage in one turn. <laughs> and it's pretty crazy. I've been having a blast with this build. If Again, guys, if you enjoy this content, drop a like, drop a subscribe. Okay, so now let's try it on this character right here. No, 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 no! Wait, 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 wait! 
Wait, 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 wait. So yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, tell me what you think in the comments. And yeah, thanks for making it so far into the video. And I'll see you in the next one, my guys.